A stomach virus has been closing schools across the country and has finally reached the Bay Area. This week, over 300 students and 30 teachers have reported having a stomach virus at San Ignatius College Preparatory in San Francisco. The Department of Public Health has cleared the school to reopen Thursday after extensive cleaning, but the school administration has decided to keep the campus closed till Monday for extra precaution. Dr. Thomas Aragon, the Public Health's Department of Population and Health Prevention advises students and staff who have caught the virus to stay home for at least 72 hours until the symptoms have decreased or gone away. University police announced they will be implementing stricter jaywalking re regulations by citing pedestrians with a fine of $191 if caught crossing a street on a red light. According to UPD, citations will be given at all crosswalks on campus, with some of the main places being Pioneer Heights, Hayward Boulevard, and West Loop Road. Sergeant Yolanda Harris said that recent pedestrian accidents that occurred in the last four months was enough reason for them to begin the regulation. UPD have previously set up informational tents and pass out flyers to inform students of the potential dangers to jaywalking, but now say citations are the only way to resolve the jaywalking problem. Young CSU East Bay students may only be familiar with the term Soul Train Line as an exhibition of dancing down a line of people cheering you on. But those students and faculty who can remember, Soul Train produced an iconic legend that will be remembered and loved. Don Cornelius is best known for his smooth and hip presence as the face of television's longest running dance show, Soul Train, died Wednesday morning from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. AllHipHop.com and Yahoo News reported that Cornelius, who was 75, had been battling a variety of illnesses and was diagnosed with dementia. Soul Train, created by Cornelius, became a revolutionary medium for black music featuring well-known and in-demand performers at the beginning and at the height of their careers. The show ran from 1971 to 1993 with Cornelius at the helm. The pioneer to music, I mean Soul Train, he just didn't say, you know, a, a not, just a an easy going guy, he didn't seem like he had a lot of issues in life, so I didn't, you know, I wouldn't think of him to commit suicide. You know, he uh, paved the way for so many, you know, of so-called minorities, you know, to push through, you know, the uh, barricades, you know, uh, segregation and discrimination. Um, the show was amazing, you know, it lasted 35 years, you know, um, it was a track that he passed away. Soul Train led the way for programs such as 106 in Park and American Idol. Don Cornelius will undoubtedly be remembered and respected by musicians and fans alike. Last Thursday, the Diversity Center held a blood drive on campus to raise awareness of sickle cell anemia and give students and staff an opportunity to provide blood to a growing need. Pioneer Web TV reporter Will Burnick gives us a look at the event and how members of the Cal State Bay community offered their help. On January 26, Cal State East Bay hosted a blood drive event at the Old University Union to raise CSUEB students and faculty awareness on blood donation. The event that involved Oakland Children's Hospital, Blood Center of the, of the Pacific, ASI Diversity Center, was an initiative of CSUEB student Prince Ray Pope and his PP production team. We, uh, we reached out um, to Children's Hospital of Oakland, California, and we also reached out to uh, Associate Student Union on campus here at Cal State East Bay. Um, and we all came together and we put together a blood drive. And, uh, you know, my assignment, you know, our, my company assignment, which is PP Productions, you know, our company, uh, we provided the, the materials as far as films. CSUEB students are, were very excited and came out in great number to show concern to people in need of blood. I like to help out other people that are in need, and it's pretty much what I like to do. Um, so yeah, I like to give blood. One of my <laughs> friends uh, told me previously about uh, donating blood, and I've been a recent donor before before I came to college. So I liked it, you know, you get the free snacks and stuff. So in high school, I used to try to get out of class and get the free snacks. But um, I went to the, um, to the, um, the donation uh, area and just gave blood. I gave blood. I gave two pints to be exact just to um, support a cause. Free snacks were given to students before and after donating blood. We're here to donate blood this morning and we're eating Ritz Bits teas because you need to be sustained before you donate blood and drinking water because the lady told us to drink some water. Specialists from blood centers of the Pacific in San Francisco came over to ensure 
the blood drive follows the norms. It's a four-step process. The first part of the process is filling out the donation form, telling us about who you are, answering a few questions. The next step of that process is what we call a mini physical. That's where you have your blood pressure taken, iron level taken. We go over the donation form with you. Third part of the process is the actual blood donation. At that point, you're giving blood to save lives. Final step is where we feed you, we give you snacks, give you juices, get your blood sugar level back up, and send you on your way. You must remain in that donor area for 15 minutes after donating blood. The entire process takes anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Students who didn't have the requirements to donate blood were turned out. And I came here to donate blood. But the requirement is that for my height, for a person who is 5'4", you need to be 120 pounds. But still, they were happy they came over. People like, if I see my friends, I'm probably going to tell them to come here. And yeah, they're all really nice about it, and they help you, and they inform you about everything. So it's a, it's a good thing. It's a good experience. The event was very successful and shown that CSUB students are very caring. The event was definitely a success. Uh, we exceeded the amount of people that we projected. Um, we didn't have enough materials to gain blood from anybody else. We had to turn people around. It was definitely a success and everybody had fun. It was a great event and we actually got nominated for, for an award. Reporting for Pioneer Web TV News, this has been Will Burnick. The Diversity Center is a program on campus aiming to provide a safe learning environment that fosters personal development and growth for Cal City Space students, located in the new University Union. It's time again for the CSU Student Research Competition. This contest is held every year in the spring on CSU campuses throughout the state. It gives undergraduate and graduate students a chance to showcase a recently completed research project and represent their school. The overall purpose of the competition is to highlight the different areas of research conducted by CSU students in all academic programs offered on all 23 schools in the CSU system. This year's contest will be held at CSU Long Beach, May 4th and 5th. Winners for first and second place in undergraduate and graduate categories will get cash prizes. Plus, travel for up to 10 teams representing Cal State East Bay will be covered by the university. But you must register before the deadline, March 2nd at 5 p.m. For more information about signing up, check out CSU East Bay's website under Grad Opportunities. And we'll be back after this short break with sports, of course, with Charlie Kennewag. In between classes, need a snack, we got you. Get a coupon and try a small bag for free at the bookstore. Curtis Jamming Kettle Corn. One taste and you know you're hooked. Welcome back to Pioneer Web TV News. There's a lot going on in sports, and our sports correspondent, Pioneer Pete, is here with the latest. Louder, please. Sorry, man. I don't think this is going to work out. I'm, I'm sorry. Here to give us the breakdown on Cal City Space Sports is our own Charlie Kennewig. Charlie, what's going on with East Bay Sports this week? A lot happening this week, so let's just dive right on into it. Last weekend, both the men's and women's basketball teams went down south to play Cal State LA and Cal State Dominguez Hills. The fellows lost both games by a combined score of 13 points, bringing their record to 7-10. and 10. The ladies were also un unable to come up with the W, dropping their record to 6-13. and 13. This weekend, both teams traveled to Sonoma State, looking to break the losing streak. Well, we're sneaking up on spring, which can only mean one thing. It's softball and baseball season. The ladies of the Diamond are coming off a 24-7 campaign last year and are looking to end up over 500 mark this season. One key returning player that will try to help them get there is senior catcher Taylor Newman. Newman had a batting average of 311 last season with 28 RBI and 7 home runs. All that while making only 5 errors in 51 games behind the dish. Towing the pitching rubber this season is another key returning player, sophomore Kelly Lowe. Lowe had an earned run average of 2.95 and a record of 10-9 last season. 
She also held opposing batters to a 206 average. The Pioneer softball team plays their first home game next Friday versus San Francisco State at noon. The baseball season is also upon us, and this week we caught up with CSU East Bay's new head baseball coach, Bob Ralston. It's been a long offseason for the Pioneers baseball team, who finished 18-32 last year. But new head coach and CSU East Bay alum, Bob Ralston, is excited about this year's squad. We do have a great group of kids and hard workers, and uh, academically pretty good as well. We got a pretty good idea, you know, who our guys are going to be, because um, they've got the opportunity in, in uh, inner squads and scrimmages and um, but sometimes when you put the uniforms on sometimes uh, you know somebody else might step up. On the defensive side of the ball this season Ralston knows that much of the responsibility will fall on the arms of the pitching staff. But we do we did inherit a couple real solid pitchers in, uh, in Bryce Miller and Brandon Bell who had tremendous success last year and they're seniors this year and hopefully they could uh, continue to be successful and um, we play good catch behind them and we get a few other guys to step up on the mound, and I think we uh, will be in a lot of games. I really do. I feel like we'll have a chance to win a lot of games. And as for the offensive game plan? Play the short game, put the ball in play. Um, obviously, you like a guy to sock one out of the ballpark every once in a while, but our main focus is just going to put pressure on the defense. Coach Ralston knows there will be challenges this season, but he is looking forward to bringing the excitement of a good baseball team back to East Bay. You know, I think they just, we need to start winning some games up here. I think uh, putting competitive teams out here, I think will bring a little more um, excitement up here on the hill. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a challenge, but uh, I think we've got a beautiful school. Like, I think we've got a great school, great education. And we got, um, you know, it, it's a school that I think it's a hidden gem in a lot of ways. You can catch Coach Ralston and the Pioneers this Thursday versus Azusa Pacific at 2.30. So there's a lot of sports going on right now in Costa East Bay. I mentioned softball and baseball starting up. Tomorrow you can catch some water polo action. And next week is homecoming week. The actual homecoming games are later in the week. But on Tuesday night, you've got the Powder Puff football game. I know I'll be there. Sounds right, exciting. I'll be there too. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> One of the sororities on campus, Sigma Sigma Sigma, held a picnic basket auction and fundraiser last Thursday, where all proceeds went to raising money for their program, Sigma Serves Children. Reporter Alexandra Leavenworth has more on the event. On January 26, the Sisters of Sigma 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 anonymously created unique meal baskets for those who attended the event to bid on. And what prompted you to start this event? Uh, my freshman year, I got to see the Delta Sigma Phi auction, and I just remember thinking, I'm kind of jealous. It'd be a lot of fun. But you know, as ladies, we shouldn't really auction. So I found a loophole, and it was a great way. Plus, a little bit of mystery makes it a lot more fun. Um, we're basically fundraising for our philanthropy. Um, we have a foundation which we always donate to um, every year, so we're hoping to get enough money here to help contribute to terminally ill children in hospitals. Last year, the ladies of Tri Sigma raised a little over $1,000 and beat that record by raising almost 2000 this year. All proceeds from the auction will benefit play therapy programs sponsored by the Sigma 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 Foundation. What was your final bid for your basket? My final bid was $40. $45. $70. $80. $80. And what made you bid that high? I just wanted to support Sigmas because they do a lot for this campus and it's good to help back. There's just a lot of food in it. I wanted to support the Sigmas and their fundraiser here. This is Alexandria Leavenworth with Pioneer Web TV signing out. Congratulations to the women of Tri Sigma for success on their second annual event. Members say they plan to continue this event to help bring awareness to the community and their philanthropy program. Well, that concludes another show at Pioneer Web TV. I'm Al Foreman. And on behalf of Charlie Kennewig, I'm Natalia Aldana. Thank you for joining us once again as we bring you the latest coverage of news and events on campus. We'll see you next week.